Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. You are holy, holy. God wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. God wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth.
Good evening and welcome to Resurrection Beach Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad that you all are with us this evening on this Christmas holiday weekend. Uh, we know that we have a lot of folks who are traveling. Some are out in Palm Springs, others are wherever. Uh, we do know that a lot of them are just not here this evening, but we're so glad that you're joining us virtually and uh, let us begin our service this evening with Meg leading us in singing the song Rise, Rise Up, Up and, and Praise Him. Right. That's right. <laughs> well, hopefully everyone had a beautiful Christmas and we're here the day after Christmas and uh, we're going to praise the Lord. So the song is called Rise Up and Praise Him. <laughs> to our opening prayer. So let us open our service in prayer and then we will go into our announcements, I think. I don't know. So let us go to God in prayer, shall we? Holy God, first of all, we are so thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, as we gather together with family and friends over uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day to give thanks and to praise. And we thank God also for the gift of a new baby girl who was brought into this world on Christmas night. So we just thank you, Holy God, for a healthy baby girl and for all the love and the cuddles and the giggles and the laughter that are going to be part of that little girl's life. And so I just pray, dear God, that this service would be pleasing unto you. And so with that, let us go to worship. Amen. And so I think, I don't know, I didn't do a script, so I don't remember. Um, what's next on the PowerPoint? So let's go back in. Uh, go there. Double click. <laughs> so now give me just a second folks we're getting things lined back up so where is it's 
done that. We've done that. No, oh, we're zipping right along. Okay. So, yes. So, it's time for our announcements. And so, you know, uh, weekly setup and takedown, you can see Anna. And for those of you who are watching us from home, remember Anna is the one a few weeks ago that had on the black t-shirt when we were doing the uh, the, oh. gift, the gift bags. And My so, happy shirt. yes, yes, <laughs> your happy shirt. And so she's here. Uh, and so if you're interested in being able to help us set up or tear down, please reach out to her. Uh, if you don't have her contact information, you can send me an email at pastor at rbmcc.org and I will get you in touch with Anna. And then of course our refreshments, something light, sweet and savory. I'm sure that's all of you. However, we're looking for food. So Louise is in charge of that. And so she coordinates all of that. And as you can see, we all eat pretty well around here. So uh, you can see her for that. And then Chris is uh, in charge of our technical support folks. And if you're interested in being able to help with that, whether that's managing Zoom or Facebook greeting or PowerPoint slash screen share slash a little bit of everything, um, you can see Chris for all of that camera as well. And so uh, Chris is available for that. And if you're interested in helping us out with our music ministry, I mean, we're very blessed that we have Meg who comes in and does live music couple of times a month. We have Harry who comes in and leads us. We have Marilyn on occasion. So we are very blessed, but you know, there's always room for more, right? It's kind of like uh, jello. There's always room for jello, right? So with that, let us uh, move forward and see what our, no, yes, our birthdays. And so let me see here. Well, yesterday, Jesus had a birthday. And so did Jesus. <laughs> and so did a little girl who is yet to be named. So, um, so we have three on yesterday. Coming up on the 28th, Aaron has a birthday. On the 29th, Scott and Rich both have birthdays. And on the 31st, our own Chris, behind the scenes yes. cameraman. Yes, has a birthday. And then let's see, next Saturday, Dorothy has a birthday. So let's just wish everybody a happy birthday, shall we? Yep. On three. One, two, three. Happy birthday. All right. And so what's up next, Anna? Okay, let's see what we got. Yeah, offering. Okay. And so we're going to have our offering now. And um, let's see, what was it? Oh, yes. So. The tie-dye pig went wee 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 all the way to the bank this past week. Oh, so he's empty. He's empty and wow. hungry. But there was a hundred and sixty-seven dollars. Wow. Yeah. God bless. So God bless all right. you all for all the greenery and the coinage that you did. Sorry, I'll keep him level. <laughs> um, I hope everybody had a great Christmas. You know, Christmas is a season. That is about giving and and sharing families. Um, there's nothing like that joy of waking up and seeing a present with your name on it and being able to open it and get something that you weren't expecting. The reality is that there's a lot of people that that need is every day for them. And one of the things that as we move forward in 2022, and by the way, that's just around the corner. Okay, we yeah. only got a few more days. Less than a week, I think. That's right. Yeah. But as we move into 2022, you know, one of the focuses that we want to have is to be able to help um, the gay and lesbian youth uh, that uh, for nothing more than just being their authentic selves and identifying with who they truly are, get shunned by their families, get put out on the streets. And to do that, to be able to support that, to be able to have this service, to be able to reach out and give meals to other people, have additional funds that we can maybe help some with, um, uh, you know, metal roofs after a hurricane or mm -hmm. other things that we've done in the past. We need your support. We need your help. And again, that's it's it's ongoing for us. 
we're, we're a church, we're, we're a special church because we have uh, a bunch of people that society at times can be very cruel to, and we're there to help them. So we need you to help us. And for Mr. Pig, he actually, I have a quarter for him that mm -hmm. uh, Frida found on the street and so and there's, there. a couple of, there's some greenery because you know you got to have a balanced diet <laughs> there you go you gotta have some salad with all that uh, yeah. with, with that heavy stuff so uh we do ask uh that people send us uh offerings and again we ask that you do it as your heart leads you to but know that even though Christmas comes once a year and, and we are in that giving spirit once a year, uh, that we need that to continue throughout the year because there, there are people in need throughout the year. And you can actually, there's a number of ways that you can help us. Uh, one, the Amazon orders that you placed and now you have to reorder because you got the wrong size and everything. Uh, when you do that, you can go to Smile Amazon and you can uh, list uh, Resurrection Beach Metropolitan Community Church as your charity. And when you do that, uh, a small percentage of that item, uh, your, your total bill uh, will be donated, not through you, but as a part of what Amazon does. And, and we'll get a, a little percentage of that. And, and that's very helpful. Uh, but you can also send uh, a donation now to Zell. Uh, and that's at 714-662-6972. You can go to our website at rbmcc.org. RBMC and when you get to that website, you'll see a little donate button. Uh, it's PayPal. It's secure. You can go ahead and, and, and use any credit card uh, to send us a, a, an offering or a donation. And or if you still like to mail things in, you can do that as well. Our mailing address is up here. Uh, Resurrection Beach, MCC 11037, Warner Avenue, number 130. And that's in Fountain Valley, California, 92708. I'm sure if Alvin's out there on Zoom, he's uh, making sure that all of this is repeated in writing. Uh, but, you know, again, our website's out there, contact information, as well as the donate button. So please give us your heart, lead you to. Amen. Thank you. Thank and you. so we'll, we'll receive the offering now. And I do have to let you know, last week, I think it was, uh, we got an email from Smile Amazon, and we were just a few pennies under $100 for this quarter. And that's actually just up through September. So, yes, so happy shopping. <laughs> and so now Meg is going to lead us in singing. Give thanks. The next song. Yes, give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and for everything that you do for us. We, off, we present this offering 
with it, we worship you, and we give our whole selves to you. Please use this for your kingdom and for your glory. We ask this, or we say this in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you so much. And Meg is going to continue by leading us in praise and worship. And we're going to start off with a song. We, we worship, worship you. Yes. I've tried this in the past and it hasn't worked well. <laughs> I'm giving it another go. <laughs> I think I got it to where it looks better now. <laughs> anyway, I like this song. It's a great song. We worship you. Israel, how 
Washington, but <laughs> sounded pretty good. He's the one who made that sound popular. <laughs> sounded really good. I watched one. his video and people were jumping up and down. We worship you. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> well, this one was done by a couple of people. I'm not sure who the one who wrote it was. Um, Paul Wilbur, I believe, and um, uh, Paul Balash. I think. Anyway, anyway, I like this song. It's got a real beautiful song to it. And I think part of our service tonight is praising the Lord in all circumstances, right? Out of yes, Psalm 148, yes. I think it is. Well, that's part of it. And uh, some of it got changed this morning. But okay, yeah, no worries. <laughs> the general you, gist of it. You can't go wrong praising the Lord, right? Yeah, so. Right.
the throne of God and they're all lifting their hands and bowing their heads to the Lord of hosts you will be praised well this song is uh, build my life and you know part of I think the sermon tonight is going to be about <laughs> about uh, us loving people around us and yes, you know showing love and so <laughs> That's in this song. <laughs> Yeah. 
Psalm 148, the Message Translation. Hallelujah, praise God from heaven. Praise him from the mountaintops. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his warriors. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, you morning stars. Praise him, high heaven. Praise him, heavenly rain clouds. Praise, oh, let them praise the name of God. He spoke the word, and there they were. He set them in place from all time to eternity. He gave his order, and that's it. Praise God from earth, you sea dragons, you fathomless ocean deeps, fire and hail, snow and ice, hurricanes obeying his orders, mountains and all hills, apple orchards and cedar forests, wild beasts and herds of cattle, snakes and birds in flight, earth's kings and all races, leaders and important people. Robust men and women in their prime, and yes, gray beards and little children. Let them praise the name of God. It's the only name worth praising. His radiance exceeds anything in earth and sky. He's built a monument, his very own people. Praise from all who love God, Israel's children, ultimate friend of God. <clears throat> praise from all who love God, Israel's children, intimate friends of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so then our, our next scripture will be uh, from Chris, who's going to be reading it live. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17 in the Passion Translation. You are always and dearly loved by God. So with the virtues of God, since you have been divinely chosen to be holy. Be merciful as you endeavor to understand others and be compassionate, showing kindness towards all. Be gentle and humble, unoffensible in your patience with others. Tolerate the weaknesses of those in the family of faith, forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you find fault with someone, release this same gift of forgiveness to them, for love is supreme and must flow through each of these virtues. Love becomes the mark of true maturity. Let your heart always be guided by the peace of the anointed one who called you to peace as part of his one body, and always be thankful. Let the word of Christ live in you richly, flooding you with all wisdom. Apply the scriptures as you teach and instruct one another with the Psalms and with festive praises and with prophetic songs given to you spontaneously by the Spirit. So sing to God with all your hearts. Let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, and bring your constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ has done for you. Amen. And so, thank you so much, Chris. And thank you, Rosie. Um, even in the midst of that, there was a dog barking, which, because of technology, we're able to edit it out. So, <laughs> praise God for that. So as we begin our, our message for tonight, and so yes, originally it was um, using our collective gifts as we praise the Lord. And yes, so we are still called to use our collective gifts. However, on the way to the morning service, God had a different idea. And so the message for tonight became, and they shall be led by a child. But before we get to that part of the message, let's take a look at the, the scripture, shall we? So um, as Rosie read Psalm 148 from the message translation, 
Uh, recall in there that it says that all of God's creation is to praise God from the heights of the heavens to the depths of the ocean floor. That we are to praise God in the hurricanes in our life and in those blessings of moments of beautiful, healthy, newborn babies and to give thanks and praise in all things, always to God. And so somewhere is around verse 11 or 12, because in the message translation, it does not tell you every verse separately. It kind of lumps them together, which is perfectly fine. And so somewhere is around 11 or 12, it talks about um, oh, our humanness, regardless of our power, our stature, regardless of our ethnicity, our race, our nationality, our gender identity. None of those things matter because all of us are created equal in God's sight and we are all to praise the Lord in all things. Even as it said in scripture, the, the bearded gray and the infant or toddler. Well, let's just change the bearded gray <laughs> to the elderly, to the mature. Let's just call them mature. That way, it's not quite so. <laughs> yes, even though I am bearded and I am gray. <clears throat> and then in verses 13 and 14, scripture tells us that there are several very important facts that we need to pay attention to. The first fact is that all of us are to praise God's name. The second point in that, in those two little verses, is that God's name is the only one worthy of praise. And the third point is God's monument. We, as God's people, are God's monument. We are what God has chosen to raise up. And so it is our duty, our call, and our responsibility to live a respectful life, to stand tall, and to always do what we are called to do. And so that brings us on to uh, Colossians 3, 12 through 17, which Chris read. And so it says in there that we are always and dearly loved by God, that we are to robe or wrap ourselves in the virtue of God because we are chosen by God to be holy. We are to be merciful in our understanding of others, to be compassionate, showing kindness toward all, to be gentle and humble, unoffendable in our patience with others, tolerate weakness, forgiving one another, just as we were forgiven. And so, and it also says, if you find fault, forgive them, release that same gift of forgiveness to them for that you received because love is supreme. And love in verse 14 becomes the mark of true maturity. Now, I don't know about you, but I know some people who are mature who are not, they do not have maturity if you get my drift. And we also know some very young people who seem to have a great deal of maturity beyond their age. And so, you know, I am reminded of several things. One of them takes place in verse 15, and it says that we are guided by the peace of the anointed one, that we are to be led by a child. And so Jesus Christ led us as a child, did he not? To a place of hope, peace, joy, and love. And Jesus led us to a place of understanding the, the need to serve one another through his ministry. And Jesus led us to the place of salvation because of his death on the cross and his resurrection. And you know, throughout history, there are many children who lead us, don't they? I'm reminded of, uh, there's two stories that I'm going to share. And so one 
takes place during the Depression. And there's three children. There's Mary Beth, there's Samuel, and there's Nathan. Now, these kids are not all from the same family, but they all live in the same household. Because, you know, during the Depression, uh, a lot of people, a lot of families had to move in together. And so in this household, there's also uh, an Aunt Mabel and an Uncle Ernest. Now, Uncle Ernest ran the local sawmill. Aunt Mabel was a seamstress. And so there's three kids in that house. And there's a ton of kids throughout the neighborhood. So Aunt Mabel takes all the little scraps that she can find. And she very carefully cuts out patterns of dolls. And she sews these dolls together. And she makes little uh, outfits for them. You know, she makes lace dresses for the little girls. And she has a friend down the street who's also a leather tanner. And she picks up the little bitty scraps that's not going to be used for anything else and makes leather booties for these dolls. And for the little boy dolls, she makes a leather, a leather vest and a little cowboy hat. And so then she gets ready to stuff these dolls. And she's like, hmm, what could I possibly use? Well, she thought, I'll have to think about that for a little while. So she picks up Ernest's pants and discovers that the, because he's, he's rolled them up because, you know, they're too long. And, you know, you, you got to save them. So those cuffs are full of sawdust. And it all falls out on the floor. And so she takes that sawdust and she's sweeping it up and she's kind of muttering to herself. And then all of a sudden she looks at it and she says, you know, I think that would be really good stuffing for one of these dolls. So she tries it, but it's a little firm, it's still a little soft. So when Ernest comes home for dinner that night, she proceeds to tell him that she didn't appreciate having to sweep up that sawdust. And by the way, when you go to work tomorrow, you need to take that empty gallon jug there with you and bring home more, because I need it for the dolls. So she keeps making these dolls because, you know, there's a lot of kids and there's always going to be a lot of birthdays. And so her uh, niece, uh, Mary Beth, is getting ready to have a birthday. And so she takes this one doll in particular, you know, she makes sure she puts the long hair on it, the lace dress, the little leather booties, and she wraps it all up. And Mary Beth knows that Aunt Mabel is a wonderful seamstress. And so she opens that box on her birthday. And here's this beautiful doll. But what she didn't realize was that Aunt Mabel put a boy doll in there too, kind of like a Raggedy Ann and Andy. And so she's like, well, you know, I'm thinking about this. But you know what? My brothers, Samuel, well, they're not exactly my brothers, but you know, we all live in the same house, so close enough. And so uh, she says, yeah, you know what? Samuel, he needs something because, you know, they're like three and four years old. They don't understand this whole thing about, because, you know, I'm six. And so I'm mature. <laughs> and I understand that on different people's birthdays, not everybody gets a gift, but they don't understand that. So she sneaks off to Aunt Mabel and she says, thank you so much. But do you have another boy down too? Well, of course I do. You know, I keep a whole stash of them. Well, can we get another one? Aunt Mabel says, sure. So they, they go off to her bedroom and they get another doll and they come out and Mary Beth presents one to Samuel and one to Nathan. Because, you know, sharing the love of, of a birthday is very important. And so they begin to, the, two, the three of them play with these sawdust filled <clears throat> dolls and they're having a wonderful time. And so now keep in mind, this is back in the depression. But you know, this family was pretty forward thinking. And so the two little boys decided that they wanted their dolls to be in a relationship. And so the parents were like, okay. And so they explained to them about love and what it truly is and taking care of each other. And so the two little boys, they were having a wonderful time. And then the, 
the house next door was vacant for a little while. Well, a family moved in and there was a little boy who couldn't walk. And Uncle Ernest, who of course ran the sawmill, made sure that he made a very special chair. And he went to a mechanic friend of his and he had a shaft made. And then he found a couple of wooden wagon bicycle wheels because you know, they didn't really have much rubber back then because of the depression. So he found a couple of wooden wagon wheels and he made a wheelchair for the kid, which was wonderful. But guess what? That wheelchair was wider than the door. So what are they gonna do? Well, we either need to cut that chair down or we need to figure something out. So what they did is they took the door off. They took the frame off. They enlarged it and they got the little boy inside the house. But then they truly discovered that every one of the doors leading from the main front door all the way through to the bathroom were too small. So they had to open up all of them. But they did this because the little boy, Samuel, when he discovered that his little friend couldn't come in and play, he got very sad. So this is the story that takes place during the Depression. And it's a story of love and acceptance and caring for everybody. And so now we fast forward to today. There's three kids, all under the age of eh, six or seven, somewhere in there. There's Mary Ellen, there's Isaac, and there's Jacob. And so Mary Ellen gets a Barbie doll for Christmas, or not for Christmas, for her birthday. Well, that's wonderful because she loves Barbie, right? But she gets a Ken doll too. And she's like, Ugh, I don't want Ken. So she throws it away and hands it to her little brother, Isaac. Here, take this thing. So Isaac's like, oh, okay, I'll take it. But then they realize that Jacob is going to be left out. So some of the, the other people in the house, because again, this is a multi-generational, multi-family house where people are all living together to try and support each other. And so the next day, I think through Amazon, Isaac gets his own little Barbie, his own little Ken. And so the two boys are playing with the Ken dolls and they start to have conversations and Oh, I've missed you. And the one little boy says, Oh, we can make their outfits match their boots. How adorable. And so they, uh, they play that they're, uh, you know, they're, they really like each other. And I don't know whether they kiss or not, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did. And then there's an opportunity where there's something that's kind of looks like a sleeping bag. And the one little boy takes both of the Ken dolls and puts them in the sleeping bag together and says, night, night. And in the midst of all of this, there's this huge play dollhouse that arrives. I mean, we're talking like a tenement thing, you know, like there's probably five or six stores to it. And Isaac wants another Ken doll for but not just any Ken doll. He wants a Ken doll who's physically disabled, who's in a wheelchair. And so that Ken doll mysteriously appears on Christmas morning. And when he holds it up for everybody in the family to see, his smile is from ear to ear. He is thrilled. But you know what? in that multi-story playhouse, the doors aren't wide enough and the elevator that's been put in is not ADA compliant. Mm. And he is devastated. What, what are we gonna do to fix this? Because Ken needs to be able to have all the access just like everybody else. Well, you know what? Somebody's gonna be getting out of jigsaw or an exacto knife, and is going to be widening those doorways. 
and doing something to the elevator, maybe taking the doors off, I don't know. But all of these things were led by a child because the two little boys, they needed a Ken doll. The other little boy wanted a Ken doll that was in a wheelchair because he didn't see a disability. What he saw was somebody that he wanted to have as a friend, just like that little boy during the depression who met the boy next door who was in a wheelchair. And he didn't care that he was in a wheelchair. He just wanted to be his friend. And he was devastated when that friend couldn't come into his house. And so he asked the adults, what are you guys gonna do about that? Because he needs to have full access. He needs to be treated equally. And that's what God calls us to do, isn't it? To love each other, to treat each other equally, to do the things that we need to do to make sure that everyone has equal access to everything, especially to God's love. And so in every one of these instances, the adults were led by a child. And so how many times have we in our lives had the opportunity to be led by a child, but we make the assumption that they don't know what they're talking about? How many times in our lives have we had the opportunity to be the, re the resource for a child who has a wonderful idea, but just needs a little help executing it? Because we all have the opportunity to be a mentor. So are we going to be mentors to help them embrace everybody? Or are we going to be mentors that will try and stop them from making those bathroom doors ADA compliant, making that elevator accessible? Are we going to embrace them and encourage them to be their authentic selves, just as God created them to be? To ask for that rainbow Barbie for that little boy. To be happy to be thrilled beyond all belief, to be able to have a very special Ken doll, one who is not like everybody else, but who deserves to be treated with respect and equal love. Amen. And so, all right, well, that's, that should bring us to family prayer. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, minor detail here, right? Sometimes this thing is a little slow. There. So. Now, this song's another pretty song kind of leading into the prayer. And this is called the symphony of our Lord. So, you know, the Lord created all the heavens and the earth, and all of them create a great symphony to him. Yes.
that is definitely a song right out of Psalm 148, is it not? Nothing on Facebook. Okay. Well, I would like, I have a praise. We have um, a brand new great granddaughter who we thought was going to be a boy. <laughs> But surprise, we're very surprise, surprise. But we're very pleased with a girl. <laughs> um, mother and daughter are doing just fine. And they'll be home tomorrow, so that's great. Right. Um, and we have a couple of um, praises. And the first one is that um, Annie is has gone to the vet and she's fine. She just needs to continue to eat uh, the people who had her while uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> Marty was so ill uh, thought she should be skinny but the vet says she needs to gain some weight so mm -hmm. everybody's happy with that and Chewy Janet and Sharon's puppy seems to be recovering from two surgeries yes. so praise God yeah. for that and we have a lot of prayer requests in that uh, Jean has a very bad cold and cough. She needs prayers for that. Uh, Prince is in the emergency room uh, this evening with possible kidney failure. So that really needs our attention. Um, and let's see, um. who else? You know, I don't remember. I just read them and I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a rough week. <laughs> uh, let's see. We uh, definitely Ed and yeah. Hank. Both of them are have serious, serious health issues. And uh, unfortunately, Hank may not be with us much longer. And his presence has been missed for a long time. Okay. And his spirit will be missed even more. Uh, we need to continue to hold up Robert and Kelly in prayer as they go through trying to resolve all of oh. Kelly's brother's uh, issues from his passing. Right. And also Robert's, no, Kelly's niece came out to help them clean out the apartment. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, she became infected with COVID. Oh. So she's back in Pennsylvania. She is an ER nurse. So they don't know whether she got it on the plane or when she got back to work. So she is yeah. self-quarantined at this point. And um, the treasure, longtime treasurer of the uh, Long Beach Pride yeah. uh, was found dead in his home. Yeah. And uh, uh, he had so, passed, I guess, about a month before they found him. Yeah. Oh, okay. so, uh, so we need to make sure that anybody that's single that we're reaching out to. That's right. We need to keep contact with the people that we know live alone, especially during this time where so many people are not going out in the public because of COVID. Mm -hmm. We need to keep track of those folks. And I know that God knows all of the thing, all of the people that we have forgotten to mention. And so we we will continue on. Does anyone have a praise tonight or a prayer request? I want Bill. How is uh, your tailbone? Is it better? Yeah. It's after month. It's doing much better. Praise, oh, praise God. God. <laughs> praise God. Um, I don't know of any others. Do you? Okay. Let's go to God. Oh, silent requests. Mm -hmm. okay. Those are always important. Let's go to God. Loving God, we come before you tonight and we say thank you for healthy babies, for pets who are so much a part of our lives, about for their healing. Uh, we continue to ask you to intervene in people's lives who are ill, Jean and 
Hank and Ed, we ask you to be with them and touch them with your love and with your healing. We ask that as um, Robert and Kelly go about sorting out Kelly's brother's affairs, that you would be with them and just help them to make it an easier process. I ask that each person who raise their hand in silent supplication, that you will touch them with your love and your grace, that you would lead them to the answers that they seek because you have them. You know all the right answers. And we ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. And so as we gather for communion, Meg is going to lead us in singing one that we all know, Santo, Santo, Santo. Clumsy difficulties. <laughs> Santo, 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 mi corazón te ora, mi corazón te sabe decir, Santo es el Señor. Unlimited, unconditional, equal love, including Christ's table. And so here at Resurrection Beach MCC, as at every MCC throughout the world, this is an open table. All are welcome to come. And so at each service, we gather together and we remember the events that took place that day. And so as Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, his family of choice, those who were there participating in his ministry for those three or so years were gathered together and he was reminding them of the things that he had taught them, the miracles that they had witnessed, perhaps they had been the recipient of. And throughout the meal, he was reminding them of all of these things. And when the meal was complete, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a piece of unleavened bread. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he tore it. And he said, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for the forgiveness of your sin. Whenever you eat of this bread, remember me. And he passed it among them, and they consumed it.
And likewise, after they had consumed the bread, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a cup of wine. We believe it to be the cup of Elijah, a cup of wine that was put out in anticipation of the coming Messiah. He raised it toward heaven. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And he breathed into it with the very same breath that God had breathed into him. And he said, this cup represents the new covenant that I make with you today. Whenever you drink of this cup, remember the covenant and remember that I love you. And he passed it among them. And they consumed it. Holy and loving God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come together as a community of faith, to be freely welcomed to come to your table, to be at table with Christ Jesus. And so we just pray, dear God, that as we receive the body and the blood of Christ Jesus, that our spirits would be renewed, that we would be filled yet again with excitement and with the love of God, the love that we are called to share with all around us, to treat all equally and respectfully. And so I just pray, dear God, that you would continue to anoint us, touch us, lead us, and guide us. In these things we pray. Amen. Amen. So that brings us to our closing song, I believe. And then we will have our benediction following that. All right, since we have a new year coming up, uh, I do the song called The Blessing. Uh, we can start out the new year right. Everybody have a blessing from the Lord. Um, just try not to think too hard about the fact that 2022 sounds like 2022. <laughs> <laughs>
before, uh, where God says to Jeremiah and to his people, I know the plans I have for you, plans to do you good and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and to give you a future. Amen. Amen. So God bless all of you, yeah. and here's to the new year. Yay. Amen. Thank you so much. And so as we close out every service, and especially as we close out our final service for 2021. Let us, first of all, give thanks to God for every morsel of food that we are going to receive. And let us pray through Holy God that you would anoint each person who's going to have anything to do with the food that we're going to receive, starting with the farm workers who toil long hours and every person from there till it gets to our mouths. The transportation workers, processing plant, store and restaurant workers. So we just pray, dear God, that you would keep each one of them safe and secure and allow them to return home to their families at the end of the day and to teach their families about your equal, unconditional and limitless love. In these things we pray. And so, thank you so much for joining us for this evening's worship service. And for our folks who are joining us virtually, thank you so much for being with us as well. And we look forward to being able to see you sometime in the future. So thank you, and God bless you all.